Hey, everybody. My name is Dr. Blanket, and I'd like to welcome you all to Choice of the Pirate. Uh, yeah, we're gonna read a story today, because I was gonna do Planet Coaster, but I... I just feel like reading a story and relaxing, so that's what we're gonna do. So here we go. A cannonball hits the water astern of your ship's hull. The resulting splash soaks your clothing. You drag your sleeve across your forehead, succeeding only in spreading the water around. Could be worse, says the unflappable Caesar Lord, your closest friend, a huge, dark-skinned pirate who towers over you and the rest of the crew. They could have better aim. Your ship's last loaded cannon fires, drowning him out for a moment, fouling the air with smoke and brimstone. Luckily, the cannon didn't explode. Unfortunately, your cannonball also missed, and now you're out of gunpowder. Ye call that a hit, ye land lovers! Screams your captain, the notorious and cruel Captain Blackguard. It's unfounded criticism, even though he know, even he must know that the way the ships are closing on each other, there's no clear shot for a broadside, and for that you should all be grateful. Prepare to board, ye scurvy knaves, and make your peace with Davy Jones, for you'll either send our enemies to him or see him yourself. The flag on the ship trading fire with you bears a skull and crossbones with a red rose clutched in its grinning teeth. It's the flag of a Captain Adelaide Briar, but why do you recognize it? I think this one, the first option, gives us a little bit more information, maybe, about the pirate herself. So, that. Adelaide Briar has a reputa re reputation, mm -hmm. reputation for being ruthless to her enemies, but good to her crew. Unlike some other pirate captains you could mention. She also captains a fine ship, and according to rumor, she's made it through the Crown Blockade at Port Lucia three times, which is the going record. Unfortunately, she had no need of someone with your skill set when you were ready to sign a contract, so you ended up with Blackguard. More's the pity. The Crown, in its ongoing efforts to rid the Luciana Sea of pirates, has put bounties on pirate ships, setting pirates against each other in hopes of making legitimate money, or earning their pardons and letters of mark. L letters. Ugh. Blackguard and Captain Adelaide Briar have a long history. The stories told in the port of San Alfonso, the pirate haven a few miles south, say they were once lovers until Blackguard's obsession with finding the treasure of Ishmael the Lost came between them. Briar mutinied against Blackguard, stole his ship and crew, and marooned him. Other stories put Blackguard as less of a victim, claiming that he went mad with rage when he found out Briar had hidden a map from him that would have led him to the treasure, nearly killing her and half his crew before coming to his senses. When he's out of hearing, other pirates call him Blackguard the Bloody. Blackguard, it is nearly as obsessed with destroying Briar as he is with finding Ishmael's legendary treasure. She was an obvious choice for his first bounty target. Wind rough, north to east, Blackguard shouts, and your crew tracks as oh, and your crew tacks as the ships Oh, I don't know what that word is. Cambiante? Cambient? Whatever. Uh, your weather mage calls a gust of wind, bringing the ships nearly side by side. No mercy, Blackguard screams. The ships grin, groan in protest as their hulls collide. Caesar, who, despite the ship's tradition, has a long insisted you call him by his first name, claps you on the back. See you on the other side, he says, and it's both a promise and a command. Wouldn't miss it, you say lightly. Caesar grins as he takes a leap across to the, onto the enemy ship, not bothering with the grappling hooks your mates are using to draw the ships together. Pirates of Briar's crew swing over from their rigging, and it won't be long before both ships have erupted into combat. And there you are, standing at the rail. 
How did you get into this mess? Let's do to avoid being conscripted into the Navy. Conditions in the Crown Navy are unpleasant, you've heard. Enough so that when you decided to head out to sea, you wanted to make sure you did it on your own terms. The strict life of the Navy is not for you. Of course, life under Blackguard isn't really for you either. As tyrants go, he's not much better than the Crown. If you had enough gold to buy your own ship and get out of the contract with Blackguard, you know you'd be a much better captain than he is. And really, gold and freedom are all it takes to be a pirate captain, which is why there's such a low bar for entry. What is it you despise most about Blackguard? Ooh. My first instinct is just to do his cruelty, but if I go with he's not a very skilled pirate, that might give me the chance to say, oh, well, I'm more skilled than he is and might lead the story better in our favor. Of course, the cruelty one could put me in better favor with the shipmates. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for the skilled one. While Caesar is more concerned about Blackguard's cruelty, even putting himself in the way of the lash to spare other sailors, you have a more professional critique. Which of his areas of bumbling do you find most offensive? Okay, so the first one gives me the chance to be a better fighter. The second one gives me more chance to have higher, like, dexterity. Third one, more diplomacy. Fourth one, better sailor. And fifth one gets me in good with the weather mage, which could be helpful. I'm leaning more towards Sailor because that's that's got to be like pretty high up there with like actually being the captain is like controlling the boat and like knowing what you're doing. And I don't know, I feel like that just gives me a little bit better of a option <sighs> but having good combat skills might put me in the right way a little bit more because then if i do a mutiny it'll go a lot better yeah i'm gonna do combat you may not be at the level of the dread pirate flynn but you can easily pick apart blackguard style because he has no style. It's pure rage that carries him through battle, and it's practically unfathomable that he hasn't been slain by now. His defenses are so weak. Maybe today will be the day that Blackguard meets his fate. But in the meantime, you've got to be sure you don't head off early into yours. Two of Briard's pir Briar's pirates swing onto the deck next to you. You've no time to clear the rail onto Briar's ship next to Caesar. You're in the middle of battle. What do you do? I already picked one choice that raises my combat abilities because I'm able to see Blackguard's style. So maybe I should try to raise, like, my knowledge of the ship? Or the magic one. The magic would be helpful. Hmm. I'm gonna do knowledge of the ship. You're not worried when pirates swing over because you know right where you're standing and you know exactly what hazards they're about to land in. There's no need for traps aboard the ship. The deck is dangerous enough with loose line and supplies. When one of the pirates lands next to you into a coil of line, you pull the belaying pin keeping it secured. The line snaps around the pirate's leg, hoisting him aloft. Simultaneously, a sheet of sail drops onto your other opponent. He curses and struggles to free himself. You clock his covered head with the belaying pin and he goes silent. Though your battle took only seconds, the scene around you has changed in the meantime, and the air is full of gunpowder. One of the cambians either Briar's or your own, you're not sure, shifts the wind. Both ships tack without 
the sailors being ready for it. You and everyone else stagger to keep your balance. You see Blackguard engaged in a duel with one of Briar's pirates, a tall woman who is Briar's first mate, you guess, near the steering wheel not far from you. Blackguard is hard-pressed. Maybe he really has met his match for, for this time. Unfortunately, if he dies, Briar might turn the crew into the crown for Blackguard's bounty. Um, uh, no, that's good. The last one's gonna get me killed. Uh, the second one leaves me without the possibility of getting a crew. Um, if Blackguard and the mate both die, that's two problems solved. I, I think I should just wait and see how it turns out. Ideally, both villains will cherish in this- cherish? <laughs> will perish in this combat, as will Briar, and the world will be rid of people plaguing your existence. Maybe you could even commandeer one of these ships, given the opportunity. The ideal so rarely happens, though. When it does, it's usually been given a little help. I'm thinking either summon a wave or use Briar's voice, because if I use a wave, that ups my magic, and before, like, just before they had said that they couldn't tell if it was our mage or the other mage that caused the wind to shift. So it's possible that if I summoned a wave, they wouldn't even be able to tell who it came from. But mimicking Briar's voice... Yeah, no, no, the summoning the wave is way smarter, because if I mimic Briar's voice, that means they look at me, and that means they know that I tried to throw them off. Since you want both of them dead, sending them crashing to the... And send them crashing to the deeps. You chant, and the water surges up, hammering across the deck. When it goes, it takes Briar's first mate with it. Blackguard, however, clings to the main mast like a barnacle. He gives you a dark look. It will take more than this to keep Blackguard down. Moments later, Blackguard approaches you, fending off another attack before reaching your side. I can't prove you're guilty of anything, but I don't need to. I'll be keeping an eye on ye, sailor. The way he says it, it's as though he never really noticed you before, and you suspect he doesn't even know your name. With all the grime and salt caked on your tunic. You doubt he can even tell your gender. Uh, and that's just how I intend it. That's kind of tempting. Just to, like, leave it ambiguous so that no one knows. Mm, nah, we'll just do the I'm a woman. What's your given name? Uh... Let's just do a custom. Let's do the one we always use for this, Krana. And what's your family name? Ooh, Silver. I like Silver. Alright. One day with enough fame or infamy, you will learn you, you will earn a moniker, but for now you are only Krana Silver, a lowly sailor your captain couldn't be bothered to remember. But the way he's looking at you now, you can tell he'll remember what you've d just done. You hear the familiar sound of incantations in the old island language. My pure? As both your cambiante and the... I don't know how to say that. Cambient? I'm gonna go with cambient. Cambient and the cambient on Briar's ship chant to try to control the water and sky around you. Dueling winds never bode well for the solar sailors between, and this time is no different. Before either you or Captain Blackguard can leap back into the fray, a terrible scream of grinding hulls cuts across the deck as the winds push the ships into each other. A breath later and the air explodes around you, flattening everyone to the quivering deck. The winds do not stop. The ships push into each other, and the air tears at their hulls until it's clear that both ships are going to shake themselves to pieces. Abandoning ship is the only thing to do. But rather than ordering the crew to flee, Blackguard is swearing up a storm, cursing at his now unconscious 
uh, cambient to fix things. The air holding you to the deck releases and you have time to move. But where will you go? Um, oh, the charts would be really helpful in sailing, but I feel like I need to have an in with the crew and saving their lives is going to be a pretty gosh darn good one. So yeah, let's do below deck to make sure everyone gets out. Most of the crew were on deck for the battle, but it's possible someone's still in the berth deck or worse, hiding in the hold. You can't in good conscience abandon ship while there might be people on her. The deck trembles beneath your feet as you stumble down the ladder to get below decks. The berth deck isn't faring much better. You can see the leaks already springing through the hull, and the groan of wood beside you makes makes it clear she's not going to last much longer. You list through the gallery like a seasick landlubber and spot the ship's crook cowering among his pots and pans. Oh, cook, not crook. Whoops. Uh, there isn't anyone else on the aft end of the berth deck unless they're hiding in the captain's cabin behind a locked door. Get on deck, you yell at the cook, but he doesn't seem to hear you. Um... Yeah, okay, clearly he can't hear me, so yelling isn't going to do anything. Forcing him above, he might be, like, massive, and I might not be able to do anything. So I think the smartest thing to do is offer comforting words and walk with him, because then that gets him above, above the deck, or on deck, and I might raise my diplomacy in the process. No matter what you say to him, he doesn't respond. His mind has gone some someplace else, and as the ship continues to creak and groan, you know you're running out of time. Ooh, okay, I force him above. If he can't save his own neck, you'll pull him out yourself. He's a portly old sailor, and he's too heavy to carry, but you yank him forward. As soon as you've put him in motion, he cooperates, following along blindly until you're both above. You make it aloft with almost no time to spare. There aren't enough dinghies to get everyone off of the ships, so you suppose it's lucky that so many pirates litter the pirate bodies litter the deck. You don't look to see how many of them are your crewmates and how many are your foes. You have enough to worry about. The last dinghy is being lowered over the side. You dash aboard. As the dinghy splashes down in the water, the pirate lowering her jumps aboard, landing lightly on her toes and grinning all the while. Can't say we'll see the likes of that again, she says cheerfully, unfazed by either the combat or the destruction. I'll be just as glad if I never do, mutters Caesar, surprisingly solemn from the aft seat in the dinghy. His huge arms are already muscling the oars into action, pulling away from the wrecks before they suck you down. You take an oar up as well, and soon all of you are rowing towards the port of San Alfonso. The wrecks of the two ships finally sink below the horizon as your dinghy arrives at the port several hours later. There may have been a few times when you've been happier to have solid ground beneath your feet, but you're hard-pressed to think of one. Captain Blackguard is issuing orders to his remaining crew. At a dock much farther down, you see Briar doing the same to hers. You've lived to fight another day, but it looks like there will be no escape from your contract with Blackguard yet. His sharp eye finds you in the crowd, and you know exactly what his expression means. So here you are, Back in the port you left earlier today, if the captain has any kindness in his soul, which you doubt, he'll be headed to the Black Dog for a drink or some music. You can always hope. Chapter 2. San Alfonso. San Alfonso. If the crown were to be believed, San Alfonso would be the cesspool into which all the, of the villains and ruffians of the high seas drained. And while they'd be right about the company, San Alfonso is nothing like a cesspool. It's a bit more akin to the tropical paradises you hear about in the romances, or even older tales of the beautiful island of Calypso. In atmosphere, it lacks nothing. 
Natural spring water runs freely. The trees provide papayas and mangoes aplenty. And the natural harbor guards against worst weather. And the crowns and the crowns naval ports. The port town itself is a vibrant place where locals mingle casually with sailors from distant shores, where music cascades down the streets and where the rum flows in abundance. But it's also a clean little town. And though the law itself is quite relaxed, there's an unspoken truce among pirates and an understanding that those who take advantage of the hospitality of San Alfonso in a way that harms her people will find themselves barred from the island. How this should come to pass, you're not sure, but there must have been a reason that the leader of the port town is known as El Sabio, the Wise. What part of San Alfonso do you enjoy visiting most on your trips to port? Uh, let's do... Ooh, hmm. The bazaar gives me a chance to make connections with people in the town that are traitors and maybe, maybe getting good with them. Ooh, this is tricky. I don't know. I'm going to do the library because that gives me more general knowledge. It means I can learn about like anything that I want to. I can raise my skills anywhere I want pretty much. Libraries are few and far between in the L Lucian but the Library of Alexander makes up for how spare written materials are in your life at sea. Open to the public, even those who aren't residents, the collection contains not only romances and other entertaining tales, but also full shelves on mathematics and navigation, astronomy and the sciences, and, tre and treaties on law and philosophy. It's a veritable treasure trove for knowledge seekers, and you admit you've learned a thing or two about tactics from the classic works on strategy you've encountered while browsing. Also, the librarian plays a mean game of chess. She's ruthless. But tonight, it looks like Captain Blackguard has found a soft spot in his heart and is leading you and the rest of the bedraggled crewmates to the Lobo Negro. The Lobo Negro is exactly the kind of place the Crown would have its citizens believe represents San Alfonso entirely. A low-end, low-class establishment known for brawls, drunkenness, and crass humor, where the rest of San Alfonso is almost eerily civilized considering its population of scoundrels and sea dogs, the Lobo Negro is a raucous house of rum and music, dancing and debauchery. It is the first stop on nearly every sailor's list upon return to port, especially sailors who are half drowned. But though good-natured brawls are commonplace, pirate captains never settle their grievances in the Lobo Negro. Like in the rest of San Alfonso, the truce applies here. No matter how much one captain may hate another, so when Captain Briar and her crew show up in much the same state as you and your crewmates, moments after your own arrival, you all avoid each other entirely. No sense rubbing salt into the wounds you're all licking. Captain Blackguard settles into a large in in at a large table, for the most for the moment seems to have forgotten about you, giving you a short time to indulge your curiosity about the other patrons of the Lobo Negro. You've met friends and enemies and lovers under this roof, sometimes all three at once. After a day like today, you'd be glad of some congenial companionship. What sort of lovers do you normally seek? I don't want to go to bed with anyone I'm not serious about, but I don't mind looking. Uh... Yeah, let's do that one, because, like, I... I don't know that it's a good idea to take lovers. Like, especially in a game like this, like, that could... That could end badly. Uh, but maybe we should do it as an I don't trust anyone in my bed. So I'm guarded and not gullible. Yeah, let's do that. Given the, t 
a tempestuous relationship between Blackguard and Briar, among others you've witnessed. You'd rather not allow yourself to be as vulnerable as taking a lover, even just for an evening. Uh, no, you don't trust anyone that close. And rather than seeking out companions, you scan the room for threats. The loudest table is where Anne Reed, a wealthy pirate captain who pro proclaims she'll be the next pirate king, is holding court. Reed would never let her gender stop her from becoming a king, or anything else she'd, ple she'd pleased to ble Ugh. she pleased to be. <laughs> and the king is a king, regardless of who holds the role. The throng of followers she's attached in attracted includes a number of ruffians, and one particularly pretty male pirate who's leaning against the wall, watching her. You recognize the expression in his eyes because you've so often worn it yourself. Calculation and wariness. He's up to something. But then, who here isn't? There's a single table in one corner, a rarity at the Lobo Negro, where no one sits alone unless they inspire respect or fear. The young woman doesn't look m like much physically, but she's wearing the clothing of a, ca of a cambient and she's clearly made an impression on someone. And then a raucous burst of laughter draws your attention to another table, where John Gunn, a drunk old sea dog, is once again recounting his adventures to a group of young sailors with such exaggeration that no bait in the world, uh, whoops, I lost my place, uh, that no bait in the world could catch the truth. Who would you like to approach? I don't want to sit at Anne's table, but going up to that newcomer might be a good idea. Because he is up to something, and it might be worth my while to figure out what. Ooh. But that, that, that weather mage is sitting alone. So they must be, like, real powerful. And it would be really good to have one of those in my book. Yeah, let's do that. The patrons around you all give you that look, like you're either brave or an idiot, as you approach the table with the sad-looking Cambient. May I join you? you ask, and the Cambient looks up, startled. Uh, I don't know what that says. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. Uh, and one of the chairs from the table shifts towards you. You could have sworn her feet weren't close enough to move it, but she couldn't have used not without chanting or body motions, could she? Ooh, ooh, this was a good choice. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't expect anyone to join me. Ooh. I'm gonna go with the talk shop thing because that puts me like more on her level. It's very friendly and it means that I might get to raise my magic stat. Her lonely expression breaks into a surprised happiness. Always glad to talk with another Cambient, especially if you have a lead on a job. She lets it dangle and you shrug. You'd guess that Blackguard will leave your Cambient here in, Alf in San Alfonso for the spectacular failure of a battle you've just had, but you wouldn't recommend anyone working for Blackguard. No such luck tonight, but I'll keep a weather eye and let you know. I'm Karina Silver. Tinema she says, not offering a last name. It's not uncommon among islanders, or pirates for that matter, to have a single name. But before you can converse further, John Gunn launches himself up from his table, tif tipping half the drinks. "'Tis the sure and honest truth,' he roars. "'I've the map on me, and I'll prove it. I'll bring the treasure back, and no one will laugh at John Gunn again.' Then he stumbles out of the taberna and into the night. His departure is largely greeted with laughter, but Blackguard isn't laughed, laughing. Your captain stands, beckons to you and Caesar Lord, and heads outside. You know without a doubt that he's going to go after Gun's treasure. Ugh, okay. No, I wanted to talk with her. <laughs> um, ooh. Okay, I definitely need to follow him because that like, puts him, pu puts me back in his good sights, you know, at least, that I'm, like, actually following orders. Um, 
I really want cinema to accompany me. Because, like, I get that, like, I don't want, I, I shouldn't be, like, offering for people to work under Blackguard. But that means that I have a super powerful, uh, like, friend in my deck of cards on, on deck. Ooh, ooh, it's a super good idea. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> okay. She looks at her empty table and sighs. You're going after a treasure, she says quietly, and you shrug. I suppose the extra experience wouldn't hurt my chances of getting a position on the ship. The cambiant walks with you to the door, and you notice how many sailors watch her leave. Not in appreciation of her looks, but warily. Like they'd watch a bad storm on the horizon. You'll have to keep your eye on this one. And then you're through the door, and Blackguard is waiting. Blackguard paces in the moonlight, the sway of his step evidence that he's more accustomed to walking shipboard than on land. Lord, he says, acknowledging the big man, then turns to you, Silver. So apparently he took the time to collect your name. He scowls at Tinema. And who's this, then? Tinema, Cambient, you say before the woman can respond. I thought she'd be handy to have along. Blackguard narrows his eyes. Then I'll be watching her with the same careful expression that's watching ye. He says, mark my words, Silver. You're here because I don't trust ye to be out of me sight. I'll be an asset, says Tinema, and the wind suddenly twists around her, whipping her cambience rose into a frenzy. Just as suddenly, it's gone. Blackguard recognizes the power when he sees it, but grunts. He's never had much faith in cambience, and he refuses to be impressed by anything you've brought to the expedition. I really thought he wouldn't have noticed. Like, that really irks me that, like, out of that entire tizzy on both ships, he somehow noticed me summoning the wave. Like, that's such BS, but whatever. Blackguard gestures at the retreating form of John Gunn, the drunk old dog with the supposed treasure map. Gunn says he's got a map to the treasure of Captain Avery Flint. "'Tis not the legend of Ishmael the Lost, but since we find ourselves in need of coin, we can't afford to miss this opportunity. We'll be the ones to get that treasure, and if ye do your part, we'll split the shares equally. Let it not be said I'm a stingy captain. You and Caesar do your very best not to look at each other, because one of the two of you would be unable to keep a straight face." <laughs> Uh, if the legend speaks true, Flint left more than enough to buy a new ship, Blackguard continues, and I'll be damned if I stay landlocked longer needs be. As Blackguard expounds on that idea with curses, Caesar le leans down closer to you. If he left more than enough to buy a new ship, he says quietly, then by tomorrow you could be Captain Silver with me as your first mate. Ooh, tempting. <laughs> Despite Caesar's quiet tone, you're sure that Tinema has heard him and is intrigued by the prospect of your taking on the helm of your own. Your own ship. Your own captaincy. It's an opportunity you've been after for years. And you and Caesar... And you... All you and Caesar need is the coin and a way out of those pesky contracts with Blackguard. The captain wants winds down his rant on the terror of being stranded ashore, and you and Caesar both nod dutifully in absent agreement. Blackguard turns to you. Silver, I think it's time for you to show some initiative and leadership. You know the code words for a captain putting a sailor to the test when you hear them. Oh, I thought that was him saying that. Whoops. Okay. Uh, you know the code words for a captain putting a sailor to the test when you hear them. How shall we go about this? Hmm. Okay. Um, teaming up with Gun is a bad idea, including the intimidating thing. Like, there's no point because that's just another captain to worry about on top of Blackguard. Like, no freaking way is that going to go well. Like, I'm already trying to get Plas Blackguard to get a, a captain position. I don't need to worry about another one. 
Um, steal Gun's map, follow Gun to the treasure, and then take it from him. I don't know how we would follow him to the treasure without being brutally obvious. So the only options I'm really seeing are to steal the map or to use magic to detect it. I'm gonna do steal Gun's map because I... Either way, it gets one of my lower skills a little higher. So I think that's the best option. Plus, I don't really need my, like, magic to be too high, given that I've already started to get that uh, weather mage on my side, like the super powerful one. So, like, yeah, I think stealing the map's a better option. It is against the tacit agreement of San Alfonso to rob a man in the streets, no matter how oblivious and drunken he might be. So it's unfortunate that you don't have the skills to steal the map without arousing gun suspicion. As he stumbles in the streets, you approach, looking to catch him and help him to his feet. But instead of letting you approach, he turns towards you, keeping his distance. What do you want? The old dog demands as you approach. You going to laugh at me? Not at all, you say, soothing him. We came to offer our help. Gun laughs, an offer out of the kindness of your heart, I'm sure, he says dryly. I may be an old drunk, but I know enough not to be had. It's my treasure, and I'll not be sharing it. He backs away from you and your companions, and you can tell he'll be keeping a close eye on you until you're out of sight. Shoot! Ugh. Okay, all right. Uh, the only thing you can do now is follow behind him as suddenly as you can can and confront him once he's at the treasure's location. Oh, I really didn't want that. Ugh. Oh man, I'm tempted to go back. <laughs> Ugh, whatever. Your party of treasure hunters follows behind the old man as he meanders through the port city and up into the hills of San Alfonso. It's a warm night, and the walk from San Alfonso to the wilds would be pleasant were it not for the company of Blackguard. Like on many of the islands in the Lucian, the interior of the island is hilly and covered with rainforest. The islanders may have ways to navigate the forests, but they're a mystery to most sailors, and even the islanders build their villages along the shores rather than in the thick forests. Though the ground is clear of low growth other than ferns, the canopy above blocks out the moonlight, making the night even darker. You've heard this rainforest is haunted. Those stories are mostly told by drunk old dogs like Gun, but the sounds of movement above you and the occasional flurry of bats just overhead, you can understand why people are suspicious of these trees. Gun stays ahead of you, and though he looks back frequently, and you're sure you're not all that stealthy, Blackguard is as awkward in the forest as a landlubber on his first voyage. He seems not to notice you. So you follow him upward, through the mahoganies and kapuk trees, listening to the howlers and vervet monkeys argue in the trees. You once hear the scream of a cat or Coyote? Coyote? I don't know what that is. Uh, and you, <laughs> and you know that no large predators live on the island. You find yourself keeping an extra sharp watch around you, which helps you to spot gun rounding a pair of boulders and darting out of sight. You hide behind the boulders and watch as gun begins to dig. As you hear Blackguard breathing next to you, you realize this is a moment of opportunity. You're far enough out of San Alfonso that the tacit rules don't apply. And if some accident were to happen to Blackguard, no one would be the wiser. Um... Yeah, I feel like he's keeping an eye on me already, so just drawing my pistol to shoot gun and then shooting Blackguard instead isn't gonna work. I feel like it'd be better if I have Blackguard intimidate Gun out of the treasure and then shoot Blackguard? I think. I think that's the better option. <laughs> Captain
Captain, you whisper. You're far more intimidating than I am, given your impressive reputation. The flattery softens Blackguard's face. He'll cower before you, and your reputation will only grow. You should go out there and do the honors. Tinema looks confused. Your words are at odds with what you said previously about Blackguard, and rather than suspecting you of guile, the Cambient on is only surprised. But she says nothing, waiting to see how the captain reacts. You hold your breath, waiting for the honeyed words to fall short. But the captain puffs himself up and rounds the boulder, his back to you. Ooh! Yes! <laughs> Oh, no way! Okay, as he approaches Gun, you fire. The man really does have the devil's own luck. Despite aiming for the largest part of Blackguard's torso, you miss. <gasps> what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no, we're so dead. Oh, we're so dead. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, the shot goes wide and Blackguard's cutlass appears in his hand almost as if by magic. You level your second pistol at Blackguard and from behind you Caesar cocks his gun as well, aiming over your head. An easy feat given how much taller he is than you. Blackguard nods. I knew ye needed eyes kept on ye. The captain's eyebrows knot together. We get back aboard ship. I'll have ye both, both flogged. Are you so? Are you so certain we'll both miss? Caesar asks in his deadly quiet voice, and Blackguard pauses. We'll part ways then, he says after a moment. You're both out of your contracts, and I'll be spreading the word that you're mutineers, not worth the trouble to punish. He sheaths his cutlass and begins walking back down towards San Alfonso. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I could let him go. But if I shoot him in the back, then maybe... <sighs> maybe we'll have a chance of, like not running into him in the future because I don't want to have the thing of like oh I should have shot him while I had the chance oh I'm gonna go for it oh god oh god okay <sighs> shoot up in the back and hope this bullet takes okay it's an easier shot, and for all his talk of needing to keep an eye on you, he's not expecting you to be brave enough to take that second shot. He's also not expecting Caesar, who has a reputation for being an honorable sailor among his pirates, to take a shot too. Blackguard tumbles to the ground, the two shots ripping through his back, and he lands face down in the ferns on the rainforest floor. Yes! <laughs> Oh my god. Yes! Oh! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Oh man. You hear a final grunt, but then he's still. Oh my god, we did it. Oh my god, we did it. <laughs> Holy cannolis. Okay. Alright. Okay, gloating is stupid. It's retarded. Um, oh, okay, so these are old style pistols, so it would take, it would take a hot minute to actually reload everything. Uh, is it a opportunity? I don't know if that's an opportunity to go ahead and take the shot or if it would take too long but maybe maybe it's worth it or maybe I'm pushing my luck 
I'm not going to offer Gun the chance to split his treasure with us, because he already said before that, like, no, it's his treasure, he's not going to split it with anyone. And he's, like, pretty drunk, so there's no way he's reasonable. Uh, the last option, I point out to Gun that Blackguard wouldn't let him live, but I will if he splits the treasure in our favor. No, because that's not going to be... That's the last one isn't going to be a good enough option because he's going to see that we just killed our own captain. Why would we let him live? Yeah, I'm going to shoot Gun while he's still distracted. Given that you've already fired once, Gun's not standing still. He runs off into the rainforest rather than get shot. That may be just as well. He's sure to tell the tales of your ruthlessness, and a bit of infamy can go a long way. People may not trust you, but they'll feel they're ugh, they'll fear you, and sometimes that's just as good. It doesn't take long to haul up the treasure chest from the hole gun dug. Oh, good. Okay, he didn't take it with him. Uh, the chest has a satisfying heft to it, and you're well pleased with the evening's work. Oh my god, we're getting a ship, and we've got a super powerful mage. Holy crap. <laughs> okay, there is not much light flittering down through the for rainforest canopy, but still, the treasure manages to sparkle when you finally open the chest. There's nearly 2,000 doubloons there, a small fortune for a single night's work. It's a long walk back to San Alfonso, but a cheerful one. Blackguard's presence no longer looms over your future quite so dramatically, and the coin you've collected means your future looks bright. Tinema practically dances through the ferns along the rainforest floor. My first treasure hunt, a success, she cheers, and I've you to thank for it. Did I hear that you'll be captaining your own ship? Her enthusiasm is infectious, and you smile. If I can find one that's seaworthy. She smiles. You'll certainly be seeing more of me, then. You detect a note of interest in her voice that's not just about finding work. No, you think you could easily deepen her interest into something more athletic, given the opportunity. But for tonight, you're for bed. Forget about the companionship. You've no energy to dally, and tomorrow you'll have to see about a ship. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, chapter three. We are done for today. Um, but uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please let me know if you liked this video, or if you hated it, please feel free to comment, like, subscribe, any of the above, and I'll see all y'all in the next video.